This episode is sponsored by Champagne Paul Roger. Champagne Paul Roger was founded in 1849 by an enterprising 18 year old, Monsieur Paul Roger. Great Britain became the premier market for his brand of champagne, and from humble beginnings, it is now famous throughout the world. In all that time, Paul Roger has remained family owned and independent. The house owns 92 hectares of prime vineyards and sits atop cellars that are over 7.5 kilometers long. At their deepest point, they're 33 meters below street level, allowing for a long, cool fermentation. The unique facilities and location contribute to Paul Roger's incomparable quality, purity of fruit, and famously fine bubbles. Paul Roger has sponsored the Barbarians since 2018 and has a rich tradition of enjoying and supporting domestic and international rugby. Both the Barbars and Paul Roger have a heritage that stretches back to the 19th century, as well as a shared commitment to sporting excellence and the exciting idea of champagne rugby. In 2024, Champagne Paul Roger will toast its 175th anniversary. Hello and welcome back to the Barbarian Show, whereby we are joined by Wallabies and, most importantly, Barbarian's head coach ahead of the World 15 game, Eddie Jones. Eddie, great to see you. How's um, camp been? 24 hours in. Well, you can hear it in his voice. <laughs> and that's been a long 24 hours. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> that good, eh? Yeah, nah, so Barbarian is always good fun. Yeah. yeah. What, what what's your approach? You're obviously you know you you're, you we can get into the Wallaby stuff in due course, but as to come and coach the the Barbarians back in London, how do you how do you approach that as a as a coach versus how you might approach, let's say the the different club or national environments? Well, I think the first thing is that the Barbarians support the institute, yeah, you know, for for upholding the values of the game, and the values of the game has always been about. Yeah, a group of group of men or women coming together, um, and you find some commonality through the game, and then you play hard for each other, and then you have a, a relax afterwards, and have a beer, or enjoy yourselves. And and the barbarians, you know, has increasingly become almost the opposite of professional rugby, where professional rugby has become so serious, you know. And now barbarians rugby is a chance for the boys to enjoy themselves. You know, I was, we were up here last night having a, a drink. <coughs> and Alan Wynne Jones, you know, 150 caps, talking to Kai Yamamoto, zero caps, doesn't speak English. You know, and that's that's the beauty of these situations. Yeah, it's amazing. Doesn't, doesn't speak English, probably doesn't speak Alan Wynne Jones Welsh either. But uh, I guess from that, you're, you know, you're only a short time into the the time with the with the Barbas, but... You mentioned the seriousness of the top end of the game. Have you have you picked anything up that's happened in the in the Babas camp or the approach of pulling together a bunch of guys from all around the world, different cultures, different nationalities, different clubs, um, pulling them all together in a very short period of time to play a test match? Well, I think increasingly the longer I catch, the more I realise the messaging, particularly now, like, when you first started playing, you probably had two or three coaches, and now most teams have got four or five coaches. Then you've got S and C coaches, you've got psychologists, physios. So the player receives so much information now, you know, and, and our job is to make the game easier for the player. Of course they need information. I think that's one of the great things about the Barbarians. You know, there's Kingsley and I. Um, Kingsley can't turn his computer off. <laughs> and he's lost his glasses, so he can't, he can't... If he turns it on, he can't see it anyway. So, you know, it's just simple messages. And I think you want players to play with intent and physicality. Like, that's what the game's about. And the more you can clear their heads and the simpler message you can have, the more chance you've got of getting that. Well, we've heard that you, you've been pulling Kingsley back a bit. Someone was saying that you, you had to step in and say, no, 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 that's enough. Was yeah. that the way the boys were uh, sort of wiltering? Or? Yeah, I, I thought we'd just done enough, you know. And sometimes I reckon you can coach just for the sake of of trying to satisfy your own needs rather than helping the players. Like, you know, we need to get out there. And when we've got the ball, run hard, support hard. When they've got the ball, tackle hard, fill in. You know, if we can do that with a, 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 a framework... To play to will play some good rugby. Must be some uh, trick moves up the sleeve though, surely. I was speaking to Steve Hansen yesterday and he said he had a few. He wouldn't tell me them in case I told you today, but yeah. you've got to have something up the sleeve, haven't you? Uh, might try up the jumper. <laughs> uh, what happens now if the ball goes up the yeah, jumper? Not allowed. Okay, yeah. we'll and test the referee. Yeah, exactly. Not allowed to back heel. Go 
We found that out after Cruzy's thing. Oh, you know, really? Are you, are you shouting out. from the coach's box on the other no, side? No, no, that? I, I'm glad. I don't know how George coordinated himself to do it. No, neither does he. <laughs> he, he. He can't work that out either. Just talking about Steve Hansen, had a chat with him yesterday. He said he'd been in touch with you. He also said that there's been a bit of trade in the players and to and fro. He said, no, no, Eddie's claiming everything he wants and I'm giving him what he wants at the moment. <laughs> no, we swapped a few players. Uh, no, it's oh, been true. good because it's, been, it's, cause it's, it's probably been the most difficult I've ever had putting a team together because every World Cup side now is not allowing their players to play. Yeah, and there used to be a bit more flexibility about it, but that's the way of the world. Is that something that you think is going to continue beyond, you know, obviously World, World Cup years are slightly different. P the coaches want their players to have a bit of downtime prior to an intense, intense pre-season. Barbarians is obviously something that we all love. It's a club with such heritage and history. From the other side, how big a challenge do you think it is for the Barbarians, but how important is it for the Barbarians to keep going and have their, maintain their place in the game? Oh, I think it's really important for the Barbarians to keep going. But the other thing I think, you know, if, you, if you draw a line through what NFL do and what Rugby League do, yeah, which are both physically tough sports like rugby. They have six week pre season and six weeks practice, twelve weeks to get the players ready to play the game. And at some stage in rugby we've got to get back to that. You know, to look up if we were really concerned about the welfare of the players, we give them proper pre seasons. Yeah, in the Northern Hemisphere, as you guys know, it's nuts, isn't it? Mm. It's completely nuts. You never get a chance to recover. You never get a chance to get better. Yeah, you know, so you just the longer you play, the more it eats away. Yeah. Talking about letting players play, also you got Quaid and Samu Karevi coming in here to play. Little, <coughs> you want to get a little glimpse of what they've got before before the Aussie? Yeah, that no, gives a head start, mate. Yeah, you know, gives a head start. They're coming off serious injuries and they get to play together. How um, with the Wallabies role? You know, you've you've I guess you've not got your hands on on the players yet, but with Super Rugby and you'll get the various players players back over for for that World Cup squad. How excited are you to to get in and and get to work ultimately <coughs> in a short turnaround into the World Cup? Yeah, no, we can put together a really good team, mate. You just see Skelton play on the weekend now, dominating it was, and you put Quaid and Karevi and and Ikatau and Corabetti. Uh, we can have a team full of power and then enough uh, smarts to, to be a very, very uh, competitive team. I know it wasn't an official block, but were you a bit frustrated to not get some of your old England boys in, involved? Because I know a lot of them have been told they they were probably best not to feature, but there was a few guys lined up. You would have been excited to yeah, re-engage with them. Well, it was going to be fun. You know, we had Danny and Joe Marler and they're both good good guys, you know. Got a bit of larrikin about them. Yeah. Uh, they would have been, it would have been nice to catch those guys, but that's the way. It Joe Milo is someone that I can see as a perfect barbarian. The way he goes about his business. Yeah, Why is he so good? Uh, well, I think you know he's 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 able to get that mixture of on the field and off the field uh, right, and he's his own man. Yeah, you know, I think increasingly in rugby, we're not seeing men not coming through, but we're seeing guys who have gone through an academy. They're told everything to do. Yeah, so we need people who are, are strong enough in their own conviction to still come through. And like if Joe Mull was going through academy now, he probably wouldn't get through. Yeah, yeah because yeah. he'd be too radical, be too hard for him to handle. Yeah, and we need to keep those guys in the game. Are you I've, looking for characters? You know, obviously, you know, it's rugby's a game that's that's typically, you know, humility is one of the core values and so on. And you know, social media, people when that first happened, people were getting knocked down for being too outspoken or too big a character and, and an individual. Now we're seeing it more and more. Is is that something that you always you look for with that dynamic within the people you have and around your team? Well, different yeah. characters, different personalities. You want a balance in your team of, of extrovert and introverts. Right. Like, you know, just simply we did a test uh when I was coaching Suntour in Japan, we did the Myers-Briggs, which yeah, basically yeah. separates them into introverts and extroverts. Yeah. And we sent the introverts out to dinner and sent the extroverts out to dinner. The difference in the dinners, <laughs> like the introverts are sitting there, no one's talking, like literally, and then the extroverts are up, you know, really? yelling, screaming. But then you don't want, you don't want an extrovert nine, extrovert 10, because then right. they don't listen to really? each other. Really, as, as, as yeah. clear as that? Yeah, you know, ideally you want to, Extrovert, introvert, extrovert, introvert, right. so to speak. Well, I was I was available for this week. Yeah. <laughs> so which side would I sit on? <laughs> You'd be fairly extroverted, mate. <laughs> I was available. I was available. Uh, going back to Twickenham, 
some fond memories there. You're not expecting any trouble in the tunnel, are you? No, that no, should be a bit of fun, mate. Yeah, you know, I had seven great years there, loved it. So I'm looking forward to getting back. Yeah, it'd be good to, for you to get back to HQ. You've had you've had one training session so far with with the guys. Who who impressed you most? Who brought the the life and energy after what was probably a a, a later night for some than others, but. One that everyone was feeling. Yeah, well, Nick Dolly's picked up the name Skips. Wow, so he's, he's been, he's, he's come through he's, in every he's conversation. Just, he's just come forward, mate. He's just gone from the back of the room to the front of the room. Wow. That's so um, I'm sure I'm sure he'll do well on Sunday. Brilliant. And other characters on on field, how have the, some of the old dogs come through? They, they, they'll they be well versed in being able to turn up and front up when it's... Yeah, well, got it's a yeah, nice mixture. You've got Quaid and Aaron Cruden, you know, okay. both very experienced Ten, Jack Maunder's younger guy, Hogarth's, you know, been around for a while. So there's this nice mixture of plays. So what's the philosophy and approach at, at the weekend? You've obviously mentioned, you know, collisions, win, win the collisions, run hard, support hard. Is that pretty much where the framework goes? And are you asking players essentially to to remember the the approach that they took when they were they were youngsters all, yeah. all over again? Well, I think there is a change in the game. Yeah, and you guys are, understand the, the game's become highly organised, and you see teams play one three three one, regardless of the opportunities there. You know, if they get a kick return, they'll go to the first pod, right? And it doesn't matter if there's three defenders on the far post, I'll still do that. Like, we're just encouraging the boys, get in your threes and attack. Where the opportunities is, go. Don't, don't, there's no, we don't have to go here, then here, then here. We want them to go. And we'll see how it goes. You've managed the Bobos before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Against Fiji, which ended in a loss. But when you go up against the Trevor Gian team, it's almost another type of Bell yeah. team wasn't it what was your, what were your memories of that week in- uh, it, was, it was different because it was November and it was freezing mate yeah. like, I tend to remember things by the temperature <laughs> yeah, it was cold and wet I remember we had Mabupi uh, the South African winger and he's Maybe, walking yeah. he's walking around the whole time in the hood um, yeah uh, and we played well they had a young team that just ran and ran and ran yeah, you know, and this team, there's a few older blokes on each side. I think the last 20 minutes could be interesting. <laughs> hey, well, Roy, Roy Best was in that team, was he? Yeah, Roy no, Best yeah. in there. He, he, gave, he gave it a good, good, gave it a good a go. Good, good go in the game or in the week? I remember up until the probably Friday lunchtime, he was hard at it, you know, and then yeah. Friday lunchtime, he's in the gym pumping iron. So I've got to get myself ready. Yeah, go <laughs> get the arms ready. Well, that, most of that Fijian team, actually, you look now at the Fijian and Drua team. There's a load of them yeah, involved in that. Nah. You look back at that team sheet. So there were some yeah, superstars in yeah. there, like some Penny Matawalu. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. Kozi, um, what's the, the winger, Hambossi? I think he yeah, might have been yeah, in there yeah, at the time. Nah, 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 100%. So you look at some of those guys yeah. you go up against. That's that's yeah, the beauty of yeah, it, isn't yeah. it? Because then teams get to throw it around yeah. against the Barbarians team. But yeah. in terms of the week, though, Rory Best was probably up there with the loosest. Yeah, no, he was pretty good. And then I remember the previous one, uh, we had George Smith and Skulk. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they were like they were every day seven o'clock finish but they, when we played the game they were the ones who went the hardest George Smith's been referenced a few times it was Gitz wasn't it that me, that mentioned uh, he was did, I think he told a story actually about about Gitz told a story about you sort of holding to, um, to account pretty early and also George Smith doing the extras I think you maybe had a, yeah. a part to play within that did you? Never believe Gitz <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I remember George Smith who was a young guy came yeah. through and had a bit of success and he started putting on weight because he loved he loved the drink and I got him in and I just said look mate you've got two choices here one give up the drink or two train twice as hard as you do and he, and he did that like historically I remember he went to uh, Montpellier and he's they had the first night out after about six weeks and he gets on the drink hard. You know, and then the next day, he's the first in the gym on the bike, training hard. The French guys can't believe him. But that's it. Get said that he said, OK, I'll give up the drink. Yeah. And you said, no, 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 yeah. just, just work yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what you wanted him to yeah. do. I've heard Scalp Burger was not just like a, in a Barbarians week. He was like that in a yeah. South African yeah. international week. He used to sit at the back of the bus <coughs> after that game against Japan down in Brighton. Which the, they lost, and he sat at the back of the bus with a beer, and I couldn't believe that he was still getting away with that. But he he used to run the show, I think. Yeah, didn't no, he? no, no. He could uh, he could handle himself in every way. When it when it comes to obviously this is this is going to be a, a special week leading into the World Fifteen, and then off the back of it is it straight into 
World Cup mode. Straight back, mate. Straight, straight, straight back, back over. Yeah. The hop, hop down, hop I down under. I think we've got ten days before we go and camp. So okay. And what's what's the plan for a camp in the, uh, in the World we're Cup? We're having one up at Gold Coast, one then one in Sydney. Uh, then we're basically in the Rugby Championship, yeah. and then we're going to go to Darwin, which is a sort of spiritual homeland of Australia. Yeah. It's pretty rough up there. <laughs> uh, they'll they'll camp in tents. Uh, go back to Arnhem Land, which is the home of the Aboriginals. Right. So it's a bit of a sort of get the spirit in your boys. Yeah. yeah. You talk. You, you talk about obviously going back into your your Aussie cap. Let's say what different what differences are there between the Eddie Jones that's in the Barbarians camp coaching and going back into that Aussie camp? Uh, look, it's just about like when you're in Australia, it's about standards. You know, here it's about having a bit of having enough standards to have fun. Like, I want the boys to think, shit, I want to come back and play for the Barbarians. This is the best work I've ever had. You know, and, they, and they've got memories of guys with them. And then they go out and they play some good rugby, good enough to win. Like, we want to win. Um, and then you've had a good week. How do you manage the the approach to to the Australian Rugby World Cup? You Obviously, you mentioned you've got the Rugby rugby Championship as your, your springboard. Now, that's a, that's a tough school for a springboard to, towards a, a World Cup. But you, you know... Some people would tout you as being the master of going in and moving the dial quickly. How do you, how do you go about doing that with this short period in the in the lead into World yeah, Cup? Yeah, well, normally with the rugby championship, you use that as preparation for the World Cup. But given our situation, we need to to get some runs on the board. So we'll target first test against South Africa in Pretoria. We've never won there. Australia's never won Pretoria in the history of the game. And then we've got the Bledsoe Cup, which we haven't won for 22 years. So we want to go after those. And then we'll regroup, because that's a sprint. Like we're, We've got to be out of the blocks quickly. And then we've got to be a li- little bit more even paced to the World Cup. And f- from that perspective, obviously, South Africa and New Zealand, the other side of the draw at the Rugby World Cup, how does that land with you? Where do you see the biggest, the biggest challenges? And what are the ambitions? What does good look like for the Wallabies at the World Cup? Yeah, we only want to win it, mate. Winning, winning is the only thing. And I think, yeah, you know, nothing's changed at the World Cup. You've got to win a big quarter final, big semi final, big final. If you've got a tough pool, you've got a big pool game. So it's three or four big games. If you're unlucky, you've got four big games. If you're lucky, you've got three big games. We're probably, we've got Wales, which you know, could be quite a difficult game. So we've got four big games. So everyone's got to win four big games. And when it when it comes to that perspective, is it written in the stars that you come up against England in one of those in one of those knockout games? Do you think? Uh, I don't really care, mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, that's a chapter closed. I yeah. loved it here, mate. Yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah, yeah, imagine yeah, imagine Australian coaching England. Yeah. yeah, what would it be? Who'd coach Scotland? The Scottish shape. An Englishman coaching Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Andy yeah, Robinson. S- s- yeah, and, and, and they didn't Robinson. like him, did they? Hey, I liked him. He picked me. Yeah. I didn't like him. You know, he didn't pick you. So he, didn't. I like Scott hey, Johnson. he, he, he liked him me. if he won. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Is yeah. that, I guess that's the thing. With yeah. Your yeah. successes at England, yeah. you know, you came yeah. in and it, I guess it's the easier game. Yeah. When it, when but you everyone play. wants their own nationality yeah. as a coach. That's the reality. Like That's the truth. Yeah, of course. It. So going back to Australia and being Australian makes it easier. Well, and Sam mentioned what you've done in terms of going over there and trying to put the you know, they're like on yeah. rugby union because it's not the biggest sport, but globally it is. Yeah. How have you gone about that? Oh, one of the big differences is, mate, RFU didn't want me to do any media. You weren't, I basically well, wasn't allowed to do media because, yeah, you know, if you're controversial, that's not, not good. Whereas Australia, I'm getting pushed out the door. How much can you do? Because like, they've got to sell the game. Yeah, right. That's well, that, yeah, that's NRL. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah. they do in NRL. Yeah. And they go, look 100%. at the model there. Get yeah. out there and... And yeah. give us what we want. So, who are the characters like the Joe Marler in the Aussie squad then? Uh, Tanella Tupu. Oh, no, he's, 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 a, he's a funny. He's, he's a he's a real character. Yeah, mate. Yeah. He's been a barber. Yeah, uh, he, might have, <coughs> he would have eaten a few steaks during that week. Oh, Rob uh, Lelta was up there. He was. Uh, yeah, he's, no, a he's a good guy. Yeah, who else is there? There's one uh, bloke that doesn't stop yapping. And he's got a nine on his back sometimes. Oh, Nick White. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's not bad either. Yeah. When it comes to that, you know the the competition, I guess, across sports. You, you met, we've mentioned NRL. You've got you've got the Aussie rules, you, cricket as well down, down there. How much does the on-field product matter with regards to engaging people in the in the game? And obviously that in balance with getting the results that 
makes people proud to be Aussies. Yeah, well, I think the the game itself is important, but I also think winning is important. Like most countries like winners, don't they? So if your national team is winning, people will follow it. Yeah, you look at football in Scotland. Like no one followed, followed the football team when they were losing. Yeah. But as soon as they start winning, people start getting excited about it. So you've got to have a good game. But generally, you know, if you look at every game around the world, it's good. And rugby can be played really well or really poorly. And particularly with the law variations now, the speed of the ruck balls made it a pretty attractive game. And there are problems, but, but you've just got to win, mate. When it comes to that as well, like, like Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere, when, when you watch Super Rugby, you know, the Premiership teams, the URC teams might say, well, defence is less, less aggressive, the weather's typically that little bit better. Does that change the way that you, you approach things from a Wallabies coaching perspective? I guess the mindset of the players, does that differ with your, I guess, your kind of audience? Yeah, well, they're, they're better at the faster game. But they're not so good at the grind because they haven't had practice of the grind. Whereas Northern Hemisphere teams generally are good at the grind, aren't they? Yeah, you, know, you go in a, a box kick contest and English sides will stay at it. Whereas Australian sides will try to break that before they can because um, they want to play freer. You know, New Zealand like playing big spaces, Australia likes playing big spaces. You know, England's happy to play in a space like this. If there's a player that you could take from the World 15 team without any arguments you could pull him straight in not putting someone out of position here out of those boys who would you Corabetti Corabetti <laughs> okay he would be really? in there but injured so he's out uh, he's that good is he yeah no, he's good. good what makes him so good because he's uh, he's powerful loves just wants the ball all the time aggressive hard as nails wow yeah. When people hit him, you can see how hard he is. Yeah. As well. He looks like concrete, but yeah. take him out of the question. Um, no, no one, mate. When, when it, a different, slightly different question. With Wallaby's hat on, if you could pick a player from another nation around the world and drop them into your squad for the, the World Cup, who's going to increase the likelihood of the Wallabies winning? Steve Smith. Steve Smith. Cricketer. Cricketer. Straight to your rugby team. He can bat, hey? hey? Straight in, mate. There we go. But on the rugby front. Uh, no rugby players. No rugby players. Happy, 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 it. Really? happy with all I've got. Good man. Uh, yeah. um, last, quick, last thing for me, just trying to take it back to a Barbarians theme. You obviously got a few more nights out. When are you going to make the players knock it on the head? Uh, the no, we'll treat them like men. Yeah? Yeah. So, so, let them decide. All right, so the extroverts could be in yeah. trouble on, the on Sunday. You'll see them, mate. <laughs> You but, reckon we'll be able to sit uh, in on Sunday at 2pm and pick out the I, extroverts? I, it reminds you of Joe Marl, I remember we had him in. It might have been 2019. Oh, no, no, no. He was playing against England. And the night before, he'd been, he'd opted out England and he came and saw me the night before the game. We had a few drinks together. Uh, he obviously had a few more after that. And then after about 20 minutes, he was, uh, you know, all at sea and opted out. So you got to fight through that. Yeah, brilliant. And when, when it comes to this, this game on, on Sunday, it is unique because typically barbarians are playing international games against international sides who have all of the, the structures and frameworks that we've, we've discussed as uh, part of the professional game. How different is Sunday going to be with the World 15 coached by Steve Hansen, essentially another amalgamation of players from different nationalities playing against the Barbarians. What can, what can those ch tuning in or at, at Twickenham Stadium on Sunday afternoon expect? Yeah, well, I think it's going to go in ebbs and flows. I think someone will get on top and they'll have a good period and then it'll change and the other side will have a good period. And I reckon it's just how many points you can score in your good period. How many do you think you'll need to win? I reckon 50, mate. 50 to win. Oh, I hope so. I Scoreboard's hope going to be busy, mate. <laughs> it's going to be a busy afternoon for the score. Just, obviously, we always go back to this. For you, sum it up. Why is the Barbarians so important to rugby? And why should it carry on lasting forever? Yeah, values of the game, spirit of the game, mate. Get men together. Doesn't matter where you're from, what you do. How many caps you've had, you're all the same. Play hard for your team, then following the game, you have a beer together. We've heard it from a number of people, the shared language of rugby, yeah, right? And, yeah. and, and the values that tie in. But Eddie, thanks so much for right. giving up your thanks time for this uh, match week. Thanks, Good luck on Sunday and to the World Thank Cup. Thank you very Cheers. much. All the best.